<sighs> well, okay. Guess I can't have a complete set of tutorials without Toad's Turnpike. It's not at all an unpopular opinion that Toad's Turnpike is one of the weaker courses in the game. There's a grand total of four, maybe five turns on the track depending on how you play it, and in between those turns, there's just two long ass straightaways with seemingly nothing for you to do. That being said, there's definitely more to this course than meets the eye, and even though this is almost certainly going to be one of my shorter tutorials, I'm gonna do my best to try and keep it interesting for you all. So without further ado, welcome to part 20 of Basic Training, where we're gonna cover everything you need to know about Toad's Turnpike on 150cc. As always, we're gonna cover the recommended builds, mushroom strats, coin lines, and other advanced tips and tricks to help you start mastering the course. This tutorial is gonna be broken down into three parts. In part one, I'm gonna go over a basic version of the run that won't include any advanced strategies whatsoever, and is designed to be widely reproducible so that you can easily conquer the staff ghost. In part two, I'm gonna go over the strategies that I use in my current personal best, and in part three, I'll cover the world record strats. To help put all the different strategies into context, I'm also gonna be including full replays in each part of the tutorial. Before we get into the video, gotta drop the obligatory. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to like and leave a comment. This type of thing not only lets me know that you're enjoying the content, but also lets YouTube know to recommend these videos to other racers who might be looking for tips and tricks on how to improve. I also release a new video every week, so if you're enjoying my tutorials and you want to stay up to date with my latest content, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell beside it so that you don't miss out on a single video. With all that out of the way, let's take the on-ramp to Toad's Turnpike. Before getting into my recommended build, it'll be useful to first cover the world record build, which is Wario, Sport Bike, Slim Tires, and Super Glider. Couple things to note about this build. This is the first, and if I'm not mistaken, only track that currently uses an inward drifting bike for the 150cc record. The reason is basically that the turns in Toad's Turnpike are all shallow and long, and inward drifting bikes actually allow you to efficiently build up mini turbos while staying as close to the wall as possible. The other thing to point out about this build is that it's got really high speed. In fact, when you look at all the world records on both 150 and 200cc, it's one of the fastest. Problem is that I'm really not that good at using inward drifting vehicles, and after a lot of experimentation, I found that the best outward drifting combination swaps out Sport Bike for Sneaker, which has stats that are almost identical to the world record build. You can also use Splat Buggy, which has the same ground speed and mini turbo stats, but slightly higher acceleration and slightly lower handling. All right, we've spent a lot of time going over the build choices now, let's move on to the time trial strategies. In general, the strategies for the level one run aren't super complex. We're gonna start by making our way to the left-hand side of the track. I see a lot of people who take the outside portion of the track because they think that the boost ramps are faster, but they're not, not by a long shot. Don't believe me? Take a look at how much farther behind I am in comparison to my level one ghost by the time I trick off the last ramp. Anyway, here's the strategy for basically every turn in the level one run. Start your drift, and then basically keep your joystick in neutral until you're about to hit the wall, at which point you just correct your angle by turning opposite your drift. So for example, on the first turn, start a left drift, tighten up just a bit so that you can get in between the railing and the white inside line, and then just neutral drift with some right joystick inputs for course correction as necessary. For the second turn, we're gonna pretty much do the same thing, except that this turn is wide enough for us to build up a super mini turbo instead of a mini turbo, so we're gonna do that. And then after releasing the super mini turbo, we're gonna grab the four coins on the left. After that, we're gonna make our way over to this first coin in the middle of the track, and then grab it and mushroom while grabbing the next two coins. This next set of turns is a little weird. There's a right turn followed by a little straight bit followed immediately by another right turn, and then ending on a long straightaway. The way that I suggest taking this set of turns is to just build up a mini turbo around the first turn and release it as soon as the track starts going straight then build up another mini turbo before the next big straightaway, again making sure to try and stay in between the inside line and the railing on the right hand side of the track as much as possible. We're going to finish up the lap by making our way to the left hand side of the track and grabbing at least three of the four coins from the start of the lap. Other than that, laps two and three play pretty similarly to lap one, except for the fact that we're going to use our mushrooms around the first turn instead of on the gigantic straightaway. There's really no good places to use mushrooms on this track in terms of taking shortcuts, so I basically just tried to copy what the world record does. 
And that's pretty much gonna be it for the level one strats. This course is super simple and you can summarize the whole thing on level one by hug all the turns as tightly as possible by neutral drifting and then build up mini turbos around each turn, except for the second turn where you're gonna build up a super mini turbo. Now before checking out a full run, let's quickly recap the coin lines. We're gonna grab our first four coins at the start of the long straightaway, and then we're gonna grab coins five, six, and seven from in between the cars right afterwards. Finally, coins eight, nine, and 10 are gonna come from the very start of lap two. Note that when we cover PV strats, these three coins are actually gonna be the first three that we grab at the very start of the run, and then the rest of the coins will be grabbed in the same order as before. It takes a bit of fancy maneuvering to do this, which is why I'm gonna leave it until we talk about the PV strats. But first, let's check out a full replay of the level one run. All right, moving on to PB strats, the only real major difference is that we're gonna be grabbing three coins at the very start of the run instead of waiting to lap two to grab them. The way to set this up is to hold left on the joystick before the run begins so that you'll start turning towards the coins as quickly as possible. As soon as you're directly facing the second coin in this line of four, you're gonna do a single right hop, and then once you grab that coin, start a left drift to widen your drift angle a bit so that you can build up a super mini turbo around the first left turn. If you pay attention to Dry Bowser's head movement here, you can see that in order to build up the Super Mini Turbo, you're gonna have to do some wiggle drifting. Now I know that in my drifting video, I said that you wanna avoid this type of drifting as much as possible, but the turns on this track are very shallow and very long, and you basically have to wiggle drift a bit if you wanna build up higher levels of Mini Turbo, since it definitely more than makes up for the slowness of the actual drifting technique itself. Anyways, you can see that I do this around the second left-hand turn as well, so I can build up an Ultra Mini Turbo instead of just a Super Mini Turbo like we did in the Level 1 run. The only other real difference between the Level 1 run and my PB is the first right turn. On Level 1, we just built up two Mini Turbos, but with some precise drifting, it's actually possible to hold your drift fully past both turns and build up an Ultra Mini Turbo. But be warned, with outward drifting vehicles, this is really annoying to learn how to do. And let me make a quick digression to explain why. When you use an outward drifting vehicle, starting your drifts has a tendency to swing the ass end of the vehicle outwards, which makes your turns a lot tighter. As you build up levels of mini turbo, your cart swings out even further, which makes you take the turns even tighter. So the problem with this first right turn on Toad's Turnpike is that because you're holding your drift for so long, you're more or less guaranteed to have a super mini turbo built up by the time you're only halfway through the turn, which is gonna cause you to move towards the wall for the reasons we just mentioned. Normally, it'd be pretty easy to counteract this by just drifting a little bit wider, but the issue is that on lap one, there's this really annoying truck that's dragging a surfboard against the road. So you're in this precarious situation where you don't want to take the turn too tightly, otherwise you'll hit the railing, but you don't want to take it too wide or you'll run into the truck. 
As is par for the course at this point in the basic training series, I spent an inordinate amount of time trying to find a good setup to help you all out, and here's what I managed to come up with. Just before getting to this final street light before the turn, start your right drift, and as usual, stay as close to the wall as possible. Then, right around the time where you can fully see the annoying truck, you want to start holding a hard left on the joystick to widen your drift angle as much as possible. You may need to adjust the timing of the left inputs on your joystick slightly depending on how close you are to my pace, but hopefully this setup provides a good baseline at least. Now after you pass the second portion of the right turn, you should have an Ultra Mini Turbo built up. So release, and then finish the lap by wiggle drifting around the final right turn to build up a Super Mini Turbo. Laps 2 and 3 pretty much play the same as before, so let's check out a full replay of my current personal best. Moving on to the world record strats, I gotta apologize because, like I said, this is the only course in the game that actually uses an inward drifting vehicle for the record, and for the life of me, I just can't figure out how to use it, so we're gonna watch the full run while I commentate. What I can say is that the reason that inward drifting vehicles are so good on this course is because if you'll recall, the outward drifting vehicles swing out a little bit while drifting, and because these turns are so shallow, this means that you're constantly moving slightly away from the walls as you drift. However, Inward drifting vehicles don't have this problem, meaning that they can build up mini turbos efficiently while staying as close to the walls as possible. You'll notice, for example, that there are long stretches where you can't even see Wario's gigantic derriere because he's so close to the railing that the camera doesn't know what to do. Other than the fact that the world record uses an inward drifting bike though, the strats are more or less the same as before, with the only real difference being that on lap 2, they go off this orange boost glider ramp and then trick off the ramp on top of one of the trucks. I'm pretty sure you can't do this efficiently with an outward drifting vehicle though. But that's all I've got to say about the world record strat, so I will catch you all at the end of the video. And that's everything you need to know about Toad's Turnpike on 150cc. Alright, 
Come on, guys, I tried. There's only so much that I can do to make a track with a grand total of four turns and no shortcuts interesting to talk about. That being said, the long right turn actually was a lot more problematic than I originally thought it was going to be. The other thing that I thought was interesting, at least for me, was trying to find a way to put together a good outward drifting combination since inward drifting bikes have been the meta on this course for as long as MK8DX Records has been keeping track. I tried a bunch of different combinations of carts and tires and gliders, but perhaps unsurprisingly, a build that mimics the inward drifting stats was the best one that I could find. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this course. I hope that you found this video interesting and or entertaining. Let me know down in the comments how much time you were able to save from the strats I went over in this video because I love hearing how much my tutorials are helping you all out. Plus, you know, the comments and the likes help me out by bringing more exposure to my videos, which is always a plus. Anyways, thank you all very much for taking the time out of your day to do some basic training, and as always, I will see you in the next video.